What's up, everybody? Today I'm Make It Cozy. We're going to make this vintage gilded sign. So before we get started, I just wanted to go over the process real quick. First thing I did was I went off the internet and I tried to find a traditional K font and I found this. After that, what you want to do is get your design ready for your mask, which typically people use vinyl. I'm going to use contact paper just to get my feet wet. Next thing is you want to prep your glass surface, right? Because if you just do it on the smooth glass, it's not going to, it's not going to bite into it. The glue won't bite into it. And so typically what you want to do is use a sandblasting cabinet with aluminum oxide. I don't have that, so I had to go through with my zzz rotary tool, which took probably like a hundred times uh, as long as using a sandblaster. But you know what? You got to make do with what you got. Process still worked out for me. We'll check it out later. After that, you want to prep your glue according to the manufacturer's instructions and get it ready for chipping out. And then you just got to wait for it to do its process, right? Once it dries, the glue is going to chip, hence the name. So then after that, you're going to go through and gild it. Again, traditionally, you're going to use gold leaf and a size made out of gelatin or something like that. But I went with the blustoleum uh, gold mirror effect. And then I'm just going to prep the rest of it for framing. And we'll check it out. So let's get into it. And there you go right there. So all I did was this is just a 10 inch by 10 inch piece of contact. What I did was I came in two inches from either side. And then I just traced out a box. That was just going to be like my template for I wanted the K. And then the part in Sharpie that you see around the edge where the main K is, that's the part that I want to glue chip. The part in pencil is what I want to do just as an accent. So that's going to maintain flat, basically, if you want to think of it like that. And that little guy, we're not going to worry about that little guy. All that happened was my straight edge carried the ink, so it's not a big deal. But this was just freehanded. And so all I did was I went in with a Sharpie, or before I did the Sharpie, rather, I just freehanded the K, smoothed it up where I thought it needed it, and then went over and traced it. And like I said, the part that's going to be maintained flat, all I did was keep that as a pencil mark for the time being. That way I could differentiate it. That's just how my wacky brain works. All right, let's give it a roll. There it is. Now I know what some of you might be thinking. You're saying, Cozy, why would you do a K that you're facing? Because whenever you put it on there, it's going to be backwards. You're going to see a backwards K, and that's stupid. And to that I say, well, I thought perhaps, the, you know, perhaps we were on the same page. But you know what? This is the contact side, right? The sticky is on the side. So whenever I put it down on my glass, this is what's going to go down. And then that way, whenever I and then etch it on the flip side, you're going to see the smooth side, which will be the K. So fear not, viewer. Everything is going to be cool. Boom. Now that the mask is ready, I just have to etch the glass with my Dremel because the glue won't adhere to smooth glass. I need something to grip into. I'm going to spare you the details on that, so let's get right to the kitchen. All right, so I got my hide glue right here. The recommended mix is one part to 1.5 parts of very cold DI type water. And then you should recognize this by now because I like to reuse and cut bottles. So this is just dry. This is just dry hide glue right there. Uh, oops, gotta be careful with actually closing your bag. And so all I did with this is I added to the 20 mil mark for the hide glue and I added to the 30 mil. As you can see, my meniscus, if my thing would focus. Boom, meniscus, chemistry, beakers, what's up? I'm gonna do this. Add it to the mix and swirl. We're gonna let it soak for uh, one to two hours, depending on how much soakage is uh, it's supposed to soak it right up. I'm gonna have my double boiler kind of action. I just gonna, I'm gonna have like a rolling simmer, stick that in there, check the temperature. It shouldn't get above 150 degrees Fahrenheit. You wanna kind of go about 110. 110 Fahrenheit, 45 Celsius. And then after that, I'm gonna stick it in my handy dandy squirty bottle. That way I can get a nice, nice coverage without going overboard. And then if the stuff sets up in here, I can always reheat it later on. It's not a big deal. We don't want it to go to waste. Reuse, reuse your stuff, right? Don't just throw it away. So for this part, I'm just really following the process that was uh, dictated from Paul at Happy Gilder, which you should check out that YouTube channel because if you're interested in my stuff, uh, you probably found his by now because I don't know why you wouldn't. It's amazing. It's, it's so informative and very inspirational. 
Whereas some other people who do the job, they, they show their work, and as beautiful as it is, it's not very detailed in the, you know, in the fine details of how you perform this. So the first time I did this, I, I grinded down the exposed part of the glass with a Dremel because I didn't have a sandblaster. I still don't. But I just needed something for the glue to, to adhere to. Just the smooth glass isn't going to cut it. And even still, my first attempt uh, that I just did on the stovetop that you saw was lacking on the, on the hold. So I did another glue chip attempt with uh, my sous vide. And I just maintained the water temperature at 135 degrees Fahrenheit and did that for five minutes. Apparently, that's supposed to have the proteins aligned better to adhere. And for this second attempt, it really did. So now I'm just going through here with the X-Acto and cleaning up those edges. And I'm just following the lines that the, that the contact paper had so that I can clean up all that glue. And I let it sit for about eh, 25 minutes just to let it get a little bit tacky, but not hard. And then... Looking online at forums, I built this box out of an old drawer and a light. This is uh, from my microwave leftovers whenever I did that grinder, if you've seen that video. And I only had to leave it in there for uh, about 24 hours, which according to other things is, you know, relatively quick. And it chipped off very well. Uh, I really adhered to the middle more than it did the edges. I'm not really sure why, and I may go ahead and do a second attempt. But in the meantime, I'm pretty happy with, with how this turned out for just a novice. For the next part, what I want to do is now that I got the glue chipped, I just used my original template for the sticky back and I traced over my pencil marks with Sharpie, Sharpie fine point. That way it was dark enough that I could see it on the other side. That's what I just pulled from underneath. And now I've got the part that I want to get out of, cut out of, cut it off, cut it out, boom. So I went through and I removed that part that I had stenciled out with the X-Acto. And then after, I, I also did a second glue chip only because I wasn't happy with the first, the first, uh, the first result. So I just masked off the, the edges here just to try to get a little bit more safe, especially when holding it for spray painting. But then just having the rinky dink contact paper wasn't really that conducive for cleanup because I wanted to get all the glue that was still stuck, but wasn't, um, chipping away and it's just you know really tiny granules or whatever so i just got some hot water and did it with a brush and then doing so removed some of this remove some of the stuff here so so now that that's all said and done we can go in for the reveal And there we go. You see there's nice chipping. I would have enjoyed if there was a little bit more right on the tip of the K here on the bottom. But this part right here looks really cool. And then even the K, I'm, I'm so glad that I did a second chip because it gives it a little bit more texture. And also it really pops against the flat part right here with the accent. So I think that turned out really nice. I can't wait to frame this up. I'm so happy that this is the way that turned out. And it's also like very nerve wracking to pull that mask away. There's gotta be, when the professionals do this, there's gotta be some level of excitement, like I'm feeling, and also just like fear that, oh my gosh, like please chip properly and look great. But I'm gonna get this in a frame, and we're gonna post it up, it's gonna look awesome. So here we go, the Yakisugi frame. That's where I'm at right now. I'm trying not to reflect my lighting in there, but you can see I got the black with the gold so that it really pops. And I really dig the Yakisugi, you know, the, the burning of the wood to preserve and, and just the, the style of it. Makes it look a little bit older and rustic, so I think that's kind of cool. It kind of goes with the theme of what I'm trying to do here. So I'm really happy about where this turned out. Uh, being a first time glue chip, the process was, was laid out very professionally and very easily easy to follow thanks to Paul at Happy Gilder. And if you haven't checked out his YouTube channel or his Instagram, I highly suggest it if you're digging this kind of stuff. Just from his intro, just the intro of his videos, I was like, yo, I got to get into this. This is exactly what I want to do right now. And, and then he goes into the process of how to do it. And each video builds upon the last one. But go check it out. It's amazing. So there we go. We got it situated over the bar, which I figured was appropriate given the vintage style of it. Also, the Yakisumi really goes with the stain that I put on the bar here. So it really ties the wall together. I want to get some more stuff up there. Hopefully, I can get some more projects. 
and hopefully you get inspired to do your own projects as well. And you don't have to do a K, right? You can do whatever letter, you can do your last name, do a heart, do a star, do a bunch of stars, right? Just let your mind be creative and then just uh, get your feet wet in it, try something simple, and then we'll try to go from there. But with that being said, I hope you like and subscribe. We'll hit you up on the next one. Peace. Thank you.